Okay, so once the junk's up there, does it last there forever? I mean, on Earth, some junk lasts forever. In most plastics, yep. uh, some is biodegradable. <laughs> And this You're not going to get any biodegrading in no, space. No, no, we don't have biodegradable junk. Um, we have very little plastic junk as well, so that's a good thing. Yeah. And, and this is kind of the problem is junk in space can stay up there for a year. Some can stay up there for tens of years. Some can stay up there for hundreds to thousands of years. So this is a model trying to say, all right, well, this is our real data, so this is what we know of now. We've got closer to 20,000. 20, All right, if we assume most of the junk is not produced in this little blue dot, and we don't get explosions, what we mean is we don't get things colliding to produce more things, maybe we can keep it stable. The likelihood is we will still get, even if we get it under control, we don't produce more, we will still get some things that collide and produce bits in the orbit. If we don't really do anything and these things collide, we can see in 100 years about two to three times as much as we have right now. And that's, these are the best case scenarios because the problem is once it's up there, it can stay up there for an awful long time. Yeah, people talk about the possibility of a, uh, a runaway cascade. Yes. I mean, this might be a situation where, I don't know, a few spacecraft collide or explode and they produce debris and then that debris then goes out to its other spacecraft and then causes them to explode and then has a chain reaction. So I imagine if, for example, there was a, a world war, yes. there could be lots of anti-satellite missiles launched and lots of satellites that are currently in one piece will end up in lots of pieces and you could easily end up with a cascade as they then go and hit other satellites and other satellites and it runs away until we've... These numbers look incredibly optimistic. Exactly. And this is what's called Kessler syndrome, originally proposed uh, back in the 70s, that we would reach this critical point of running away that at some point there is so much junk floating around that you actually can't really successfully put anything in orbit anyways because as soon as you go up, you would collide into it. And, and this is kind of the thing that frightens people. What stops them lasting forever in space? Well, ultimately, it's kind of their orbit and the Earth. Now, we often think of the Earth uh, as, as, as kind of this finite border that you go in, you're in space, right? Problem as we talked about earlier, exactly. of course, there is an atmosphere gradually thins down. Exactly. And so what's going to happen is in the lower orbits, there's still a little bit of atmosphere. That's right. Which is going to pull them down. And just a little bit at a time. We're not talking about dramatically, but every time they go around, they pulled a little bit more and a little bit more. And, and given the, the lower thought they're going around every 60 minutes or so. That's a lot. Even if they lose your 0.1% every orbit, that's still not going to last very long. Exactly. Now, the, the further away you go or the higher, the less, as we talked about, atmosphere you go through, so the less of this drag. So you can stay up there for a long time. I mean, at 900-ish kilometers, you can be in orbit for about a thousand years. Now, as we saw in all the previous plots, we were looking at 200 to 250 thousand kilometers so a lot of these dense areas this stuff can stay in unless we actively remove it for a millennia yeah so if all our rockets were 200 or 300 kilometers it wouldn't be a problem that's right they would say a day they, to a month yeah but of course we don't have many rockets in these orbits that's because right. they would only last a day and a month we normally want our satellites to last longer than that exactly we, we ideally put them in that yeah 400 to 700 range because we want them to last for a couple of years yeah and that makes sense but that also means that's where most of our debris is. And so most of our debris can then stay in there for tens to hundreds of years. And it doesn't matter how small you are, right, Paul? Uh, yes, I mean, the smaller things will tend to come down faster probably because they have a higher ratio of surface area that's to right. mass. That depends crucially on what, I mean, exactly. higher density things. Plastic will come down much faster, solid chunk of metal rather slower. Um, but yeah, so it's, um, a very big spacecraft might be hollow and they have a large surface area to give drag against the That's right. atmosphere and that might bring it down faster than a, the same mass scrunched into a small shape. Exactly. So there's going to be some variation here, but you're not going to have something that normally would say up there for a thousand years only lasts for a day. That's right. As he said, this is the reason why we put them up there in the first place. And if you start looking at the, say, what we call eccentricity, so how circular versus how non-circular yeah. the orbit so if you're is. in a nice circular orbit that's keeping you at the same distance from the exactly. earth the entire time which is going to give you the longest life if you're in an elliptical orbit where you might be a long yep. way out and then come in close 
of course it's that close encounter when you go to be the outer parts of the atmosphere exactly. and that's going to start bringing your orbit down and so um, circular orbits relatively long lasting the more eccentric it is the more elliptical the orbit is the shorter your lifespan exactly but even some of these really eccentric ones can go from you know this is a year to Again, hundreds or thousands of years. And there are very good reasons why we put satellites in eccentric orbits. If we want to go over the poles every time or we want to follow the sun so we can have our Earth observations, they have some more eccentric orbits. But the debris and the stuff is still going to be up there for 10 to 500 years. And given that we've only been launching satellites for 60, 70 years, that's actually a long time still to go from the original drunk, and I think this is the thing that we don't think about. The debris from 1957, some of it is still in space from the 60s, and it may be up there for another couple of centuries. Or if it's at a high orbit, much longer than that. Mo longer than we may even be here, and so this is that impact that as we put so many things up there, and as we want to build more, and as we want to critically access it, it's going to be up there for a very, very, very long time unless we have active plans of either how to safely remove it or control creating more of it. Yeah, so for things in low Earth orbit, it's the atmosphere that brings them down. That's if something's right. way out like a geostationary orbit, the atmosphere is irrelevant out there. Exactly. Um, th those things, uh, will they last forever? Well, probably not, because at some point they're gonna, they will run out of fuel. They still need to be controlled and maneuvered. Now. There, you could have the right combination where it's actually kicked out of orbit, but that's still unlikely based on the gravitational pull of yeah. the Earth that we've seen. You're still going to not stay in the perfect orbit because of the gravitational pull of the exactly. Moon and the Sun, the tides will slowly move them out, radiation pressure in the planets part of the course. You talked about how yep. asteroids change their orbits and all those sort of things will apply. They're probably never going to fall to Earth, but they are going to get scattered out over a larger and larger distance and so they end up colliding with the Moon or in, leaving, uh, leaving Earth orbit. Exactly. So instead of just polluting Earth, we get to pollute other places in space as well. But to be clear, that's a much lower risk. That's right. That's not the worry we uh, have. These orbits are not going to get so crowded we can't go into space. Low Earth orbits where the danger is. That's where the danger is. And even because to get to those higher orbits, we still have to get through low Earth orbit as well. So between 200 and 2,000 kilometers is where the worry is for space junk.